Hello to all the children in the world, all the dogs and all the cats, all the pets, birds, hamsters. Anyway, get some snacks. The stories are just about to begin. I have tea, but it could be milk, it could be lemonade, it could be anything. Whatever, a little beverage you have. And then here I have some uh, bread and jam. And some bread and honey. It could be some bread and peanut butter, too. I have subscribed to a new channel. It's called Tsunami Skateboarding. So I will be um, checking that out. And you, if you guys like skateboarding, which I love to watch, check it out. And I will um, post some of his videos on my Twitter. Okay, so now I'm reading The, the White Stag. This is part three by Kate Suretti. This is good. The story is getting good. This is Magyar in Hudor. Twin Eagles of Hadur. The untamed wilderness closed on the broad path broken by fire and crushed by sharp hooves of horses. Fresh green sprouts grew on charred roots. Vines covered deserted campgrounds. Black bear and tawny Mountain lions stalked their prey once more unmolested by hunters. Snow fell and the last traces of men were covered with thick with a thick white blanket. The people of Hunor and Magyar had left the headlands of wild Altain Alt Altain Al Eula forever. The snow capped peaks had looked at their coming and going with indifference. In 12 moons, they had forgotten them. To the everlasting mountains, they meant no more than the passing of dry leaves by the wind. But the people had not forgotten the mountains, nor had they forgotten old Nimrod. The memory of his strength was like an armor around them. Their belief in Hadur like, like a magic sword, nothing could resist. Wild beasts prowled in the wilderness. Hostile spirits hovered in mountain caves. Hot blistering, hot sun blistering the plains. Roaring rivers or howling blizzards were powerless against the tribe. Relentlessly, they pressed on towards the promised land. Hunor and Magyar became worthy successors to their father. They led the tribe safely to the gentle hills by the misty lake. For years they stayed there, undisturbed, gaining in strength and numbers. In the most beautiful spot of the new land, they built an altar. Their fragrant herbs and fields were burning day and night. The great festivals were held every spring when the ever smoldering, every spring when the ever smoldering embers were stirred into roaring flames when offerings of game and fruit were brought to Hadur. Then every man and woman and child would gather and listen to the minstrels as they sang of the past and the future, old songs wailing sinister like the voice of hostile spirits in the wilderness of Altain Eula. New songs full of joy and laughter like the laughter of good fairies who lived in the misty blue lake, rousting songs full of faith of the coming of Attila. The story of the white stag became a song too, a song everyone knew by heart, and there was the silent question in every heart, would the white stag come again to lead them towards the promised land? Then one day, Hunor and Magyar saw the white stag again, they had been away all day on the hunt. Descending darkness found them still far 
away from the camp. They spurred their horses on, for it was not wise for any man to spend the ghost hour in the woods. They rode as fast as they dared through the thick, dark forest, but the ghost hour, the ghost hour was upon them. Green-eyed owls, restless spirits of wicked men, hooted at them from the branches. Wild cats snarled under breath, and lichens, hoof marks of the devil, shimmered on old tree stumps. Gray mist crawled from the damp ground, blotting out paths and, and landmarks. The forest grew denser. The trees blocked the paths. Brambles tore at them. Hanging vines caught them. Hunor and Magyar reined in the trembling horses and peered around, trying to penetrate the darkness. They knew that they were lost in this strange, ghostly forest. Suddenly, Hun Hunor exclaimed, Look, brother, to your right, the white stag. Shimmering white against the dark trees, the stag stood not far away. He seemed to float on the rolling mist, to move with it slowly, silently away. Follow him, whispered Magyar, and his words were echoed by the trees in the suddenly friendly forest. Follow him. Follow him, whispered the leaves. Follow him, whispered the gurgling hidden spring. Follow him, sighed the wind. Thorny branches coiled out of the way, and vines crept back to let them pass. Always in sight, but never letting them near, moved the white stag silently. Trees fell behind. Now they were riding on a grassy hill. A brook, a brook tinkled like silver bells, and the breeze uh, sang sweeter than flutes of a minstrel. A cluster of white birches gleaming, gleaming at the top of the hill. There the white stag turned to look at Hunar and Magyar. Then they lost sight of him. When they reached the trees, he was nowhere in sight, but the sounds of bells and singing grew stronger. Now it seemed to come from quivering silvery leaf birches. Such a lilting, lurry music sound, magic sound, that they stopped to listen. Do you hear the laughter and the singing, brother? asked Hunar. Do you see the fairies dancing, brother? said Magyar. As if the question had drawn a veil from their eyes, an enchanting scene opened before them. The white birch tree trees formed a circle enclosing, enclosing a smooth green carpet of grass and flowers. Dancing in the ring were two beautiful maidens, fair as none whom Hunor and Magyar had ever seen before. Their long, pale gold, their hair was pale and gold like the moon. They wore wreaths of flowers in their hair and were clad in pure white garments. All around under the trees sat little, little gay dark men coaxing sweet music out of their reed pipes. The eyes of Hunor and Magyar flashed at each other. Moon maidens, whispered Magyar. Moon maidens those strange changeling fairies who lived in the white birch trees and were never seen in, day, in daylight. Moon maidens who, if caught by the gray hour of dawn, could never go back to fairyland again. Moon maidens who brought good luck to men. We must detain them. The ghost hour is waning, whispered Hunor. Silently they dismounted and tiptoed closer to the dancing fairies. They were inside the ring of trees, when a shivering sigh went through the branches and the music stopped abruptly, somewhere a, cro a cock crowed. The two fairies stood motionless in the ring, gazing at Hunor and Magnar, Magyar with frightened eyes. A scurrying, scampering sound came from the underbrush where the little dark musicians had a moment ago uh, were 
only grow roots and dead and tree stumps. The two brothers smiled at the maidens and took them gently. Hunor led out, held out his hand. One of the maidens touched it with her fingers. Her touch was cool and light, like a bird's wing had brushed his hand. She turned to her sister and said something in a strange language. They seemed to have lost their fear because they smiled and let Hunar and Magyar lead them to the horses. At the sight of the animals, they gave a little surprise laugh and exclaimed with joy when they were lifted onto the saddle. The first rays of the sun cut a shimmering path through the trees. In the distance, Hunor and Magyar could see the dark blue ring of the lake, the pale, uh, the pale thin columns of smoke rising from the campfires. A lark shot into the air and burst into song. White daisies and blue cornflowers opened their sleepy eyes to smile at them as they passed. A belated whimpering will rain a belated whimpering will rain with them hidden in the tall grass crying here they come here they come now the now near the camp a young boy jumped from the bushes and ran to the path crying Here they come. People ran from the tents and campfires, happy, eager, and crying. Moon maidens, Hunor and Magyar, have captured moon maidens. They were surrounded, exclaimed over, mar marveled at the story of how they found the maidens had to be told. Only the boy who saw them coming was suddenly quiet. He stood apart from the crowd, motionless, rigid, gazed, gazing ahead with wide open eyes, his face pale. Hunar noticed the boy. He walked over to him and laid his hand gently on his head. Why do you look at us so strangely, Deimos? He asked the boy, pointing his finger at Deimos. He asked the boy, pointed his finger at the maid, moon maidens, the white herons I saw last night. The voice was hardly more than a whisper, yet it brought a hush over the crowd. People serious, women exclaimed. He dreamed strange dreams last night. I heard him moan. She ran to her boy. Tell us about your dream, my son. Demo shook his head. It was not a dream, mother. I was not asleep. What did you see, Demos? Tell us, urged Hunor. The boy began to speak haltingly in a low voice. Last night I went to sleep in my mother's tent. I don't know how long I had slept when I felt someone someone touch my eyes and I heard a call, Deimos, Deimos, wake up and see. See and remember. Remember and speak. I opened my eyes. There was no one in the tent and it was very dark outside. I heard the call again and I went out. There was a light by the altar and I saw an old man standing by the steps. I had never seen him bef before someplace, but I but I c cannot remember. I have seen him somewhere, someplace, but I cannot remember where. He was very tall, taller than Hunor, taller than Magyar. His hair was long and white, and his eyes, the bo boys faltered for a moment, and his voice grew stronger. He called me with his eyes. He called me, and I went to him. He spoke to me, but his voice was not the voice of the man. It was from the ground and sky it came from the trees the stone and from my own heart it came from everywhere nimrod groaned the crowd his voice was like that the boy went on his voice said open your eyes deimos and see see and remember i saw the embers of the the altar grow brighter i saw flames look higher and higher slim narrow flames pointed like swords i followed them with my eyes and then i saw i saw two great eagles flying above between them two white herons whiter than snow herons whiter than snow beautiful to behold for a long time they flew together and i lost sight of them again i heard the voice see deimos and remember 
I saw one eagle and one white hair heron, and they seemed to merge. together until there was only one white bird, a white eagle. I heard the voice, Here, Deimos, see Deimos, here, Deimos, see Deimos, hear and remember. Okay, that's part three. I will be back tomorrow.